This morning, I would like to give great honor to all the mothers all over the world today. We honor all the mothers here today. We honor the grandmothers, the great grandmothers, the stepmothers, and the mothers of our local church. We honor the memories of all the mothers who have passed on, on to eternity. They are the foundation of our upbringing. I give honor to my daughter, Francine, who has given me four lovely grandchildren, praise the Lord, and to Marcia, who has given me two more lovely grandchildren. Thank you. God bless you. Keep up the good work. And to Pastor Kevin, my son. I have two children. I'm Sister Cole. Praise God. I love the Lord. And this morning, I will be bringing to you the message today. I'm asking you for your prayers that the Lord will have his way this morning. Let us bow our heads as we look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you this morning. We thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for your presence this morning. And Lord, as your words, they are about to be delivered. We pray, God, for your divine anointing. Pray that you'll touch my lips. Your words are already blessed. Give us receptive hearts that we will receive, Lord, as you give unto us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of us who were here a few weeks ago, as Minister Harriet preached on the sermon series, Gender According to Genesis, we are being reminded of the changing forms of society. Society has changed. Customs have changed, cultures have changed, technology has changed and increased, but a mother's love for her child has never changed. Do you agree with me this morning? Amen. A mother's fight for the survival and well-being of her child has never changed. We still want to secure the well-being of our children. Some mothers may deviate due to diverse circumstances, but that is not the norm. You know, in our world, uh, we hear of all kinds of things happening, what mothers are doing, and because of different circumstances, because of the enemy of our soul sometimes. You know, things are not going the way as a mother should behave or attend to their children. But that, that is not the norm. We give God for our mothers who are being mothers. Amen? The Bible said that sin is a reproach, but righteousness exalts the nation. The word of God never changes. It standeth sure. A mother's love, care, protection, nurturing, for her children has not changed. This morning I bring to you the topic, the sermon, the power of a mother's fate, taken from Exodus chapter eight, verses, Exodus chapter one, verses eight to 22, and Exodus two, verses one through 10. I present to you Je Joshebed, Moses' mother, Although this, this happened thousands and thousands of years ago, and you might say, Sister Cole, things are different now. You know, but um, as I said before, a mother's love has never changed. Customs changed. Society changed. But I believe the labor pain is still the same. <laughs> Amen. And I think those days it was even worse than now. Yes. But thank God for this woman of God, Joshebed, a woman, a mother, the female gender, mentioned only a few times in the Bible. 
but despite her low profile, she provides a finely drawn portrait of a mother with great faith. So great a faith that she was worthy to be mentioned among the heroes of faith in the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 11. She was a mother who trusted in God in a very difficult time in our history and in a very difficult situation. She was from the tribe of Levi. Her husband's name was Amran, a Levite also. Joshabed's name meaning Jehovah is her glory. And it is said that she learned to consider sorrow a friend. We realize, ladies, that motherhood is not easy. Motherhood is not easy. All different kind of circumstances are set before us. But we depend on God to navigate these curves and bends in the road. And today, mother, we are doing a good job. Amen? Today, I want to tell you, mothers, we are doing a good job. Just continue to lean on the Lord. The writer said, I've learned to lean and to depend on Jesus. He's my rock. He's my everything. And mothers, this morning, if we continue to learn to lean and depend on Jesus, he will see you through. Praise God. 400 years had passed since Joseph moved his family of 70 to Egypt. The descendants of Abram had increased mightily, and God's favor was upon them. God had promised Abram if he obey him, his descendants would be like the sands on the seashore, numberless. Now these same people were no longer honored by the Egyptians. They were no longer welcome in the land as the people of their great deliverer, Joseph. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt who knew not Joseph, nor knew not the God of Joseph. Amen. The writer said, we serve a living savior. He's in the world today. Oh, praise God. And just the time that we need him, he is there. Oh, thank you, Lord. The people of God, they face tremendous, tremendous trials. But the king of Egypt, he didn't know what he was up again, against. He didn't know the man of God, and he didn't know the people of God. The Hebrew people were looked upon as foreigners in the land. And their numbers were very frightening. So frightening that the Pharaoh of the day decided to make slaves out of them in order to decrease their numbers and to weaken them so that in case of war, they would not be able to upset the balance of power of the land. Because he said that maybe they would go over on the enemy's side and fight against them. <coughs> But you see, if they were treating this, these people right, then he wouldn't have to fear because he would say the numbers are great. In case of war, they will come and defend us. But he was not treating them right. He was treating them bad. So he was afraid that should in case a war breaks out, these people would come against him. But what happened? He made slaves out of them to weaken them and, uh, uh, and to, ups, uh, uh, to weaken them so that in case of war, they would not be able to come against them. But this method, this method was ineffective. So he ordered for all the male babies to be executed at birth by the midwives. This also proved ineffective. Then he ordered for all the male babies to be cast into the Nile River at birth. So this was like a genocide in the land of Israel. Oh Lord, those were dark days for the children of Israel. Everything looked hopeless. What if all the male children were murdered? 
then there would be no males left to fight in their battles. Then in no time at all, the nation of Israel would be wiped out. But the writer said, but God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But God. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want to tell you this morning, when you are going through testings and trials, and the weight seems heavy and you don't know what to do, I tell you, look to God. In every situation, he is there. The writer said he's there all the time, and he's waiting patiently in line this morning. The almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, we worship you this morning, almighty God. We praise you, Jehovah God. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. Oh, the one that sits among the cherubim and the seraphims. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. But God... But God was about to do something great. Great for the nation of Israel. Great for his people. Great for the people of God. Hallelujah. So God drew a human being into his plans. A woman. A mother. The female gender. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Much would depend on her faith. She had to have the right stuff in her. Strong, brave, courageous, God-fearing. And much depended on her faith to the de de degree to which she was attuned to him. Attuned to God's leading and directions. Although the Bible said that women are the weaker vessel. But I tell you something, brethren. Women, we are strong. Women, we are brave. Women, we are courageous. Women, God is depending upon us. Oh, praise God. We have got the right stuff in us. This morning, I want to, for you to rejoice. We have got the right stuff in us. God has loaded us with the right stuff. Off. He has given us benefits. He's depending upon us. Oh, hallelujah. He wants to use us as instruments of his. We are not a pushover. We are not weak. We are not afraid, but we are strong. Not in ourselves, but strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And therefore, God would see it fit to use a woman, the female gender, a mother. Oh, yes. To bring about his plan of deliverance. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 2. Verses 2 to 3. We read this morning. And the woman conceived. And bare a son. And when she saw him. That he was a goodly child. She hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him. She took for him an ark of bulrushes, this is the King James Version, and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. She did all she could. The writer said, when men on earth has done their best, angels in heaven, it was the time of the decree when all the babies born to the Hebrew people, would be thrown into the river Nile, where there were crocodiles there, ready to devour them. But this lady, Joshabed, hallelujah, she had this child, and she looked upon her, this child, and she said, I cannot, I cannot throw this child, oh, to be destroyed. Oh, my God. Oh, praise God. I cannot do what the king wants me to do. Oh, praise God. Oh, yes. So she hid him for three months. She hid him. Oh, Lord. But God was with her. The writer said, God will never leave us. 
and he will not forsake us, but he will be there with us. Oh, praise God. I can hear J Joshabed praying to the God Almighty. I can hear Joshabed pleading to God, asking God, save my child. The writer said, can a woman tend care, cease towards the child she bear? Oh, Lord, she didn't want to see her child die. She didn't want to see her child destroy. She didn't want to see the crocodiles in that river eat up her child. So she looked to God. When she placed the little baby in the Nile River that day, after she did all she could, oh, yes, I can just feel her heart beat this morning oh yeah she didn't know what else to do her back was against the wall she did all that she could do oh my lord but she said lord if it be thy will as jesus said on the cross nevertheless not my will but thy will be done so she placed the little baby in the nile river that day she could not have known that this child would one day grow up to be one of God's greatest leaders, chosen to rescue the people, the Hebrew people. She could not possibly imagine how fascinating God's orders were to this child. Every child that comes into this world comes in with sealed orders. Every, you, every child that comes into this world has a unique destiny. Every child that comes into this world has a unique purpose to fulfill. Every child. Every child, there are sealed orders upon every child. As the baby is born, before the baby was conceived, God knew our destiny. And it does not matter what disease or sickness or deficiencies, God knew it before time. We all have sealed orders in us. We all have destiny to fulfill. The Bible said we are wonderfully and fearfully created by the Lord God of heaven. We are wonderful and we are fearfully created. And we all have our destiny. We are special in the eyes of God. You are special in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. There is no one like me. We are God's handmaid. We are God's children. And, and God didn't want the babies to be thrown, to be eaten like that. It was not his will. Not his will that any should perish. But Jehoshaphat did all that she could. Mothers, oh yes, when you have done all that you could, then turn it over to the Lord. He's there. He's waiting patiently in line. Oh, praise God. He's there to help you. As Jehoshaphat daily bathed and clothed and fed this little baby, how could she possibly know that one day he would become one of the world's greatest national leader? How could she possibly know that he was their deliverer? Sealed orders. That was a sealed orders from God. So we should not take our children for granted. We should love them and do our best. And when we can't do our best, Give them up to the Lord, and God will do the rest. Seal orders. Your child has sealed orders directly from God. Do your part. Do all you can do, and God will do the rest. Amen. Our children are, al are alone from God, and they are the only ones we will take to heaven with us. We're not going to take the car and the house and the bank account. We're not going to take the jobs and everything else. I don't even know if we're going to take the husbands with us. But the Bible, they said that we're going to take our children. We are going to take our children to heaven with us. Amen. Praise God. 
Oh, hallelujah. As a man, he would pass on God's laws to the Hebrew people. Laws that centuries later would still be considered the foundation of the Christian faith. He foreshadowed God's son, the Messiah, that was to come. But the first development of these characteristics, of these facts, were now placed in the loving hands of his dear mother. We do not know what our children will be when they grow up. It's all in the future. It's all seal orders. God knows everything. And all we have to do is to pray for them and give them over to God each day. Sealed orders, brethren. Sealed orders upon our children. Hallelujah. By all human standards, this child never had a chance to live. Not only was he born a slave, but there was already a death sentence pronounced upon him. Had he been a girl, he would have been expected to live. But as a boy, he had no life expectancy. Death was calling out to him from the River Nile. Insecurities and faith fought for presidents. There were human insecurities in Joshabed, but there was also assurance of faith from the divine God. It was a testing period for her, but the tests made her faith grow stronger. I want to encourage our mothers this morning. We might be going through many a test. We might be going through many a trials, but I want to tell you this morning that God is with you. He's standing right there beside you. He is a loving God, the God that sits high, but he looks low. He has given us our children, and sometimes the road gets rough, and the going gets tough. But I want to encourage you this morning to hold on a little longer, and take Jesus as his word, at his word. He will carry you through this morning. He will help you this morning. Don't give up. Don't give up this morning. Don't give up on Jesus. Don't give up on your Savior. Don't give up on El Shaddai this morning. Don't give up on Yahweh this morning. Don't give up on Elohim this morning. Call upon him, hallelujah, because he's as close as you mention of his name. Call upon him this morning. Call him up, call him up, call him up this morning. Call upon God this morning, and God will give you strength. God will give you peace. God will give you the assurance. Call upon him this morning. He's not a dead God. He's a living God. Hallelujah. The writer said, and just the time I need him. Have you ever been in a situation when your back is against the wall, and just the time you need a miracle, God shows up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just the time you need him, he's there. Hallelujah, waiting patiently in line. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So she calmly and carefully went to work. Every possibility was thought through. Gradually she developed her own good solutions. She fell in steps with the plan of God, the plan God had formed in heaven for this child. Her part in this plan was vitally important, but she could only move to the directions God pointed out to her. Therefore, her growing faith made her inventive, and she became skilled in hiding this child and developing ideas, new ideas, to spare his life. Her problems did not paralyze her, nor isolate her. On the contrary, her problems paved the way to greater possibilities, and her difficulties became her friends instead of her enemies. She made the salvation of her youngest child a family affair, 
through her approach, through her approach, the problems and concerns became a blessing to the entire family. Sometimes we have to call for help, and it's all right. If we see we cannot handle the problems ourselves, call us up. Call up our sisters. Call up on our brothers. Call up somebody. I need help. I cannot handle this by myself. The writer said, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. This morning, call up someone. There must be someone we can call upon. We are here. That's for the purpose we are here. Her husband was one with her in her faith, yet it was she, the mother, who especially put her signature on the member, other members of the family and welded them together as instruments for God. Praise God. Although the problems seem insurmountable, they were nearing an end. God has plans and God has no problems. I want to tell you this morning, brethren, God has plans. As God sit in heaven, his dwelling place, God has plans, great and wonderful plans for you and I. Accept the plans of God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. If the spirit is working in your heart, oh, yes, do, do not disappoint the plans of God this morning. Do not disappoint the spirit of God this morning. Oh, yes, if the spirit is knocking at your heart door this morning, don't turn him away. Oh, yes, but receive him. Receive God Almighty. Receive him this morning. God have plans for you and I. The writer said God had a plan, and he did not have any problem. Yes, yes, yes. My mind goes back to our Bible study. It said God's dwelling place. In heaven, God's dwelling place. All is in order. No chaos. No chaos in heaven. There were chaos in Egypt. There were chaos in Goshen. There were chaos there. Christ went up to God, weeping and wailing. Oh, hallelujah. Chaos for the Hebrew people. But in heaven, it was calm, it was peace, it was safety, because God is an on-time God. We can trust him. We can take him at his word. We can lean upon him. Oh, hallelujah. And my mind goes back to our Bible study as we talk about revelation. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And as the, score, the seals were open, one after the other, Everything was done timely and in order. There was chaos on earth. The winds were blowing. The earthquakes, the hails, the fire, the famine, chaos on the land. But in heaven, all was in order. Praise God. And I want to tell you this morning, you can experience this. You can experience the peace of God that pass at all understanding this morning. You can experience heavenly thought. It's not a myth this morning. I have experienced it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. When there was chaos in my life and I didn't know what to do. Oh, God smiled down on me. He smiled on me. Hallelujah, this morning. You can experience that peace that is, can only be found in the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. Come to Bible study. I tell you, we are doing some good things. We are talking about heaven, the place that we are going to go. We are going to go to heaven. It's not only good to sing about it, but we have to know the word about it so we can talk about it and look forward to it. He said, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of love, words of life, words of beauty, words of truth. We are going to heaven. Hallelujah. I said, we are on our way to heaven. Oh, yes, my Lord. 
but we do not want to be when God pour out his judgment upon earth. We do not want, oh yes, to be there. We won't be able to tolerate that. It will be such a judgment. But I tell you, God has plans for us. Amen this morning. All is in order in heaven. He's an on-time God. Whatever is the situation, our God is an on-time God. Chaos on earth, order and peace in heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Joshabed. Joshabed placed the little boat in the waters of the Nile River that day. And she took her hands of her son and she placed him in the hand of a greater power hallelujah she took her hands off her son and said god i cannot do anymore it's your turn now god and she placed him in the hand of a greater power the one who gave him to her she let go and let god let go this morning we might be holding on to something this morning. What are we holding on? What can we replace for God Almighty? Let go this morning. Let go in the name of Jesus. And let God move in your life this morning. Because when your back is against the wall, you're going to need him. You're going to need God. You're going to need him to lead you and to direct you. I can stand, brethren. I know what I am talking about. I can tell you, you're going to need him. And if you place your confidence and your faith in him, he will not disappoint you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Esther said, if I die, I die. But I must see the king. Oh, hallelujah. Place your confidence in God. He's the rock of all ages. He cleft for you. Place your confidence. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Where am I? Oh, hallelujah. So she placed, oh Lord, the little boat in the waters. And she let go. And she let God. I'm coming down. James 1 verse 2 and 3. When all kinds of trials and temptations crowd into your lives. Don't resent them as intruders. But welcome them as friends. Realize that they come to test your faith. And the testing of your faith work at patience. The writer does not say if your faith is in te being tested, but it said when, nobody is going to get away from testing. No matter how much money we have in the bank account for rainy day, you're not going to get away from testing. Our life is in the hands of, the God, of God. So it's not if, but when, when, when all kinds of trials and temptation, it's life. This is life, brethren. This is not a myth. This is life. Life. Oh, my God. We are living life down here on earth, but we know life isn't. One day we have to give an account. We have to give an account. So the writer said, when all kinds of trials and temptation carry out your lives, don't resent them. Don't say, why me? I know sometimes I say, why me? But it's not right. Don't say, why me? Oh, Lord. But welcome them as friends, realizing that they come to test your faith. We will have to have a little testing We'll have to have a little trials. We'll have to have a little temptation. But the writer said the testing of our faith work at patience. The writer does not say if, but when. Have a positive outlook. Turn your hardships into times of learning. Do not, 
do we do not know the depth of our character until we see or we react under pressure. He promises to be with us. God promise. Take him at his word. Take him at his word. He promised to be with us through death. Oh God. He is with me brethren. Death made me stronger. <sighs> death made me stronger this morning. Oh hallelujah. Josheth did experience the truth of these words. There were common people like you and I who were instruments of God because of their faith. Despite their hostile environment, they thought vertically instead of horizontally, spiritually instead of according to their own natural human nature, convinced that their God was greater than the greatest difficulty. They courageous faced the test. Like Josheth today, we won't always foresee God's purpose in letting go, but we can surely trust him that his plans are even better. Josheth was famous in the eyes of God, not because she was the mother of a great man, but because of her faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. A faith that is steadfast fast and sure. A faith that is rooted and grounded in the almighty, self-sustaining God. 